considering IVF, or maybe you're going through IVF right now and you're just wondering if you're going crazy, today we're going to talk about all the dirty details of IVF that no one talks about. And mom and grandma, if you're watching this video, it's not for you. Turn it off now. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. My name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I just had my second frozen embryo transfer on December 11th. We did egg retrieval back in July of this year, and hands down, the biggest thing that no one prepared me for with IVF was the amount of frisky that I would feel with egg retrieval that I would be able to do absolutely nothing about. Let me explain. When you prep for egg retrieval, you inject yourself with a ton of hormones to encourage your ovaries to make 20 or more eggs at one time. The clinic will warn you not to have intercourse while you're going through the egg retrieval process, just because if there's sperm up in that area when they're doing egg retrieval, it can mess up the pre-implantation genetic testing of your embryos later, but also because of the risk of ovarian torsion. Because your ovaries are swollen to a much larger size than normal, they don't want you to do anything more vigorous than walking, so no vigorous exercise no intercourse. If you did have intercourse and your ovary flipped or torqued, then you could lose blood supply to that ovary and you could lose the entire ovary. But just think about the times when you are ovulating and you see your husband and he's looking a little bit, a little bit better than normal and all those feelings that you have and multiply it by about 20 and you can't do anything about it. It's like you're a high school girl and you just saw Twilight for the first time and you're frantically Googling images of Robert Pattinson again. Not that I did that. I was feeling so overwhelmed with these feelings that while my husband and I were driving back and forth to monitoring ultrasounds, we actually started workshopping a romance novel together. My husband's a writer. Um, and during the process, I wrote out the romance scenes and literally wrote the entire novel. He's actually editing it for me. And I think we're going to post it on Amazon. I'm literally not making this up. It's about a sexy lumberjack. The second thing that no one prepared me for with IVF was the estrogen headaches. Everyone loves to complain and moan about how terrible the progesterone and oil injections are, but honestly, I will take a progesterone injection any day over an estrogen headache. When I prescribe estrogen to postmenopausal women, it's usually not more than one milligram a day. Right now for embryo transfer, I'm on four milligrams in the morning, two milligrams in the evening, plus two different estrogen patches that I rotate every two days. It's a lot of estrogen. Your body does get used to it after a while, but each time you restart estrogen, the headaches can be absolutely brutal. And a lot of times Tylenol won't even touch them. You just have to lay down in a dark room, hope you can fall asleep and hope it's gone when you wake up. Finally, the third thing that I think women don't talk about enough with IVF is that it's really more of a mental battle than a physical one. I recently saw a video of Paris Hilton tearing up as she gave herself injections to prepare for egg retrieval, and it really rubbed me the wrong way because honestly, egg retrieval is like the least painful part. Yes, you have to give yourself lots of shots, but they're just subcutaneous into your belly fat with teeny tiny itty bitty needles. They really aren't even painful. Because she used a surrogate, she didn't even have to do the most painful part of IVF, which is the progesterone and oil injections that you you do for embryo transfer. Honestly, though, if you've been going through infertility for a while, you are probably so much more tougher than you realize. You have probably been through a lot already. Personally, I think the hardest part of IVF is just making the decision to do it. I recently suggested IVF to one of my patients who's 41 and has been trying to get pregnant for a while. And her gut reaction was like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want someone sticking a needle in me to take my eggs out. And yeah, I can appreciate that that part sounds really overwhelming and scary but you're asleep for it. For most of the painful shots and procedures that you have to do for IVF, you just got to breathe through it and then it's over pretty quickly. Does my butt feel super bruised from all the shots I have to do every night? Yes, but in the grand scheme of things, it's just not that big of a deal. What's harder is waiting to get that date for egg retrieval, waiting to get the date for embryo transfer, waiting to take your pregnancy test. But if you've already been through waiting for a baby for months or even years, you can probably handle anything that your reproductive endocrinologist is going to throw at you. Anyway, I hope you found this video entertaining. If nothing else, if there were other surprises or symptoms you had with IVF that no one warned you about, please drop them in the comments. I post new videos every week about infertility, recurrent pregnancy loss, and soon, hopefully, pregnancy after 35. So like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Um, I did make a video about what to expect at embryo transfer. So if you're wondering what to expect, I'll link that next. Thank you so much for watching.